Hi everyone, welcome to another video tutorial from PrestaTraining.com. Today's video I think is really, really cool. I ran across this free module called Add Stuff. And basically what it is, it's more or less just a blank module. It's really similar to like an advertising block or something like that, but it's essentially a blank block module that you can install your HTML code or your JavaScript code and you can do some really cool things like what I've done over here. This is uh, one version of the Add Stuff module and essentially what I've done is I just pulled a video I had created on YouTube. I've got the embed code, I adjusted the size parameters and then I stuck that code in the HTML sheet for this particular module. So now what I can do is I can incorporate any type of a YouTube video into my shop. So if you have a particular video that might help you sell some products or advertise your store, you can go ahead and drop it in. And just to show you how it works, it's you know it's just like what you see on YouTube. You've got all the sliders and the controls. You click play and it starts up just like a normal YouTube video. Now of course it's small and if you click on it here, I'm gonna pause this I'm going to click on it again it will bring it up in the YouTube window and kind of take off from where it left off there. So I'm going to close that. Okay. So, you know, with a little creativity, you could do a lot of really neat things just with videos. Um, it took me a little bit of time to figure out how to actually size this correctly, and that's part of what I want to show you. So, in this video, what we're going to talk about is incorporating a YouTube video into the Add Stuff block. In future videos I actually want to show you something that I think is extremely critical for your store which is incorporating an Aweber sign up form for a newsletter or an email campaign into that particular Add Stuff block. So we'll talk about that later. Today we're going to talk about uh, the YouTube video integration. So the first thing you need to do I'm going to take you up to a tab here that I've already got set up this is where you'll have to download it from. And special thanks to eCart Services, uh, I'm sorry, eCartService.net, that's where I found the module. So uh, this just goes to their home page, eCartService.net, take you right to the home page. And where you want to go is to their free PrestaShop modules tab. So click on that. And then you scroll down. And you can see they actually have several things here that I will check out eventually. I'm so impressed with this Add Stuff, add, add stuff uh, module. I definitely want to look and see what the other modules do. But for now, let's just talk about Add Stuff. So let's go to Read More. Or I'm sorry, Get Add Stuff. You can go right here, get it directly. You can certainly go to the Read More if you like. And there is some good stuff there. So I'm going to open it with my WinZip program. Let's go ahead and minimize this. And I am going to move my add stuff just over to my desktop. Close this and get it out of the way. I'm going to open my FTP client FileZilla. Okay, I've got my FTP client open. And now, like all modules that you install, you have to install the module in the correct location which is in the module subfolder. So you're going to go into your root directory and for me because I use all these demonstration stores uh, this is my root and then I've got my installation folders here and I go down to modules. So in modules and I've already added this in so I'm just showing you kind of where I put it. So basically you would just grab it over here and you could drop it right into mad modules and it would uh, you know, put it down here. So I'm not going to do that because it's already done. Uh, but that's how you would do it. So just be sure you drop it into the Modules tab. And once it's there, let's go to Add Stuff. And this is something that you'll want to know. It comes with an HTML file called My Stuff. Now you can come up with multiple files. This is actually just where the basic code is or where you're going to put your special code to put stuff inside that block. So let me open this up and show you what this looks like. This will make more sense later once we actually get 
um, to the back office of the store. It's very simple. All it includes uh, right now, and I've, I've modified this a little bit already, but you have a header and then you have a, uh, and a basic div tag for the block content and then I've got my script right here for an Aweber form. So I'm not going to spend any time with this particular one here because this is what I experimented with initially and we'll talk about this in another video but it, there just isn't hardly anything to it. So if you've got script for pretty much anything you want whether it's HTML or JavaScript or whatever you just drop it in between these two, uh, this beginning div tag right here and this ending div tag right here and then you save it and you be sure that you transfer the file back to your um, your add stuff folder here and overwrite the my stuff uh, file that came with it or you just change it like I did here this is the modified my stuff that I created and you don't have to call it my stuff you can change it to whatever name you want but I just kept it simple I made it my stuff YouTube demo .html. so let's look at that one okay in this particular version of my stuff YouTube demo I actually eliminated the header so I'm gonna go back here here I'm gonna get rid of a couple of these so this is the my stuff we just looked at it had a header tag that was centered and it said join our newsletter well I didn't want to do that I just wanted to have the plain old YouTube video as basic as I possibly could so I just have the outside div tags for the block content and then the div tag again that centers the YouTube code now this will take a little explaining on how to actually get to the right size of 191 pixels wide by 137 pixels tall and I'll get to that in a minute but this is all there is to it and this code that I got right here on this line all came from YouTube so it didn't have to really do much except figure out the correct width and height parameters which let's go ahead and I'll show you how I did that now in order to determine the width of this space here you're going to have to have a basic understanding of using Firebug with Mozilla Firefox and that's addressed in a separate video that you can check out on my website now in order to figure out the width of this particular column you need to have a couple resources to look that width up I'm using Mozilla Firefox and I also use the Firebug add-on which essentially allows me to view the page source or the HTML and CSS information on the page so I'll put together a separate video on that and basically it'll be a tutorial on using Firebug with Mozilla Firefox so for now though I'm just gonna go ahead and right click and click inspect element which is part of Firebug okay so this allows me to do is find various elements on the page and I like this little tool right here because I can actually kind of highlight what I'm looking for and it gives me a lot of great information it just takes me right down to it if you look down in this area here just kinda watch as I move my cursor around so um, I'm looking at I'm look, trying to find a width on this particular item here or maybe even on the column itself is easier so what I'm gonna do is I, as I move this around you can see down at the bottom I'm just gonna click here there now it kinda locked in that div tag the div ID left column so what I want to do next is activate the div ID to be sure okay so I can do the div ID center column too and you can just watch this stuff over here on the right it'll change each time I click on a different div ID so you can see now I clicked on the right column it says right column up here if I go back to the div ID left column it's the left column this is really really slick because it gives you a bunch of information right away and the first thing I notice is that my width is 191 pixels that's how I figured out how to work with the width on my YouTube video now just to show you some other cool stuff if you went to the div ID of the center column I know that now my width is 556 pixels and div ID of the right column my width is 191 pixels 
So that's really all we need to know for right now. It's 191 pixels wide. So with this information, I can go to YouTube and uh, incorporate the 191 pixels in the width of a custom YouTube sized video. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so here I am at YouTube and I've got one of my videos pulled up. All you want to do is go down and click on the embed button and it'll bring up the embed code and right now it's set I believe for the smallest version here which is 560 by 349 you can see that in the object width but I don't want that I know that my maximum width is 191 pixels so I'm gonna to go to the custom area here and I'm gonna type in 191 pixels okay now what you will notice over on the right it says minimum width is 200 pixels and um, because of this limitation we have to do some things manually but the reason I type this in here is because it gives me the correct aspect ratio of what the video should be so at 191 I just need to remember that it's 137 pixels high so write that down or keep it in your memory banks but I want to show you what happens well actually you can see nothing has happened let me show you what happens when you do this the way they tell you to let's say I made this 250 did you notice up top this changed it's no longer 560 by 349 it changed it to 250 by 171 so if I change it again and go back to the 191 it just takes it back to its default smallest size so okay just know that that's what that's what's gonna happen but we can actually make a video that is 191 uh, by 137 and it will work so let's grab this embed code just click in here and copy it and now I'll take you back over to where we can modify our my add stuff youtube.html file that we have in our module folder again.